Chainlink's Verifiable Random Function, or VRF, version 2 just released. It gives developers better scale, flexibility, and control. Hi, my name is Stephen Fluin, and today we're going to be taking a look at Chainlink's VRF version 2 that was just released. VRF version 2 has a few different mental models that we should be aware of, and I want to show you what it feels like to be using it. The big important thing to know about VRF version 2 is that instead of the VRF1 model where you'd be funding your contract with Link, instead you're going to be funding a subscription, which is basically an account that allows you to fund and maintain balance for multiple consumer contracts. Let's dive into the docs and see what using VRF v2 looks and feels like. In order to show this off a little bit, I'm going to dive right into the get a random number guide in the Chainlink documentation. And so it's going to go through a few of the requirements of some of the technology we're going to use today. And the first thing it's going to ask us to do is to make sure that we are on the Rinkby testnet. So let's go ahead and jump over to Rinkby, make sure my MetaMask is unlocked here. And now that I'm on Rinkby, great, uh, I should be able to use the VRF version 2 testnet. Now we're going to jump over to Subscription Manager. And the Subscription Manager is where we're going to manage our subscription account. Basically, this is the place that you put the funds in order to be able to use it across a bunch of different chains. So we're going to go ahead and connect our wallet here in order to use the subscription app. And then we're going to go ahead and create a new subscription. So we'll just use my address as the subscription address here. I'll approve the creation. And as soon as that transaction is confirmed, our subscription should be created. All right, now we have a subscription. Basically, this is the account where we're going to fund it. And then we can use that account for all of our randomness requests. So I'm going to go ahead and just put in 10 link here. You can put in however much you want. The price in link of every random number you request is going to be based on the current gas rates on a given chain, as well as the gas lane that you've chosen. All right, our funds have been added. Let's go ahead and add a consumer contract. So it's asking us for a consumer address. We don't actually have a consumer address yet. So let's go ahead and jump over to the documentation and create a contract that is going to request a number. So if you scroll down, you're going to see this VRF 2 consumer.soul contract that we can open in Remix. Let's just jump right there. We're going to notice a few different things in this contract. At the top, we've got uh, some imports. So now you've got VRF consumer base version 2. We've got an interface for the VRF coordinator and then also a reference to the link token interface. So uh, all of those are specified for you on the RinkB network here in the example code. Uh, and then you can refer to the documentation for whatever chain you're going to be deploying to. Uh, and then you're going to see a few new options here. So the key hash option is the way that you specify that gas lane that was described in the documentation. So depending on the key hash you choose for the given chain you're on, the gas limit will be set differently for your random number request. So for example, on Ethereum mainnet, we have a 200 GUI key hash, a 500 GUI key hash, and a 1000 GUI key hash. You can also see in our contract here that we have a callback gas limit that you're in charge of. So depending on how much uh, gas you're willing to spend in the fulfill random number, uh, you should set this value appropriately. Uh, next up is request confirmations. So this it was something in Vera v1 that you could not control, but here now, depending on the chain you're on, depending on the request and the type uh, nature of the request you want to make, you can actually change this number. And then one of the most important and useful features that gives you a lot more flexibility and control of your VRF is you can actually specify the number of random numbers you want. And so you specify the num words, and then that will specify how many random UNT 256s you get back from the network. All right, here in the constructor, we're going to see a address for the coordinator and address for the link token. And then you'll see that the subscription ID is going to be created as we deploy the contract. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and get that. So if you remember when we created the subscription, after we funded it, we see the subscription ID. And now when I deploy this, I'm going to use that subscription ID. And we've got two methods that should look very familiar. We've got uh, fulfill randomness method that takes in the randomness this is going to be fulfilled by the VRF Oracle, as well as you've got request random words, which is how we're actually going to initiate that request to the Oracle. So I think we're actually already ready to go ahead and deploy this. So let's jump to the deploy screen here and select the right contract, which in our case is VRF v2 consumer. And I'm going to make sure that I am on injected web three so that we can actually deploy to the rink B network. Uh, and I'm going to paste in the subscription ID here, and I'm going to deploy. Let's go ahead and pay for that transaction. And as soon as that is confirmed by the network, uh, we'll show up here and we'll be able to copy this address and then add that as a consumer and authorize this contract to use my subscription account. So 
Let's go ahead and authorize this with another MetaMask transaction. All right, we can now view our subscription. We can see how much link we funded it with, and we can see our consumer contract. So now by doing this, we've authorized our consumer contract to make requests for randomness. So let's go ahead and make a request for randomness here. So we're gonna go back to our contract that we deployed here, and we're just gonna use the Remix interface here to keep things simple, and I'm going to request some randomness. So obviously this is gonna use all of the uh, configuration that I specified in my contract, which is kind of hard-coded here, so we're gonna get two words of randomness here. So we're gonna hit request randomness, confirm the rink B transaction, and then as soon as that transaction comes back, we should notice that we actually have a request. And then what we'll be doing is we'll be waiting for the Oracle to call fulfill random words on our contract. And then we'll be storing all of those random words in this S random words storage variable. Let's go ahead and check to see if our random numbers come back from the Oracle. So I'll go in here into random words and let's request the zeroth item of the array. Looks like we've got a random number there. And because we requested two random numbers, we should also have an item in index one. All right, we've got our randomness there. And if we go back to the subscription manager app, you're gonna see that there's actually an event history item here. We'll see that we spent about 0.33 link to get those two random numbers. We've just taken a journey to see what it looks like and feels like to use VRF version two. Give it a try and let us know what you think. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.